Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for TheDailySheeple.com, and this is your new shot. Let's go to Activist Post. They say a $21 trillion global Pandora's kitty. Hmm. Yeah, Matt Agarist. I'm sorry, Matt Mavic says, uh, U.S. federal debt approached $21 trillion in a matter of months, an eye-popping equivalent amount seeming seems to have gone missing, I guess you could say, from government coffers over the past two decades. And, of course, I'm talking about the missing $21 trillion that was tabulated by a team of researchers led by Dr. Mark Skidmore, Morris Chair of State and Local Governments and Policy at Michigan State University. Skidmore's team tallied up undocumentable adjustments, <laughs> a euphemism, of course, for accounting uh, glitches at the U.S. Department of Defense and the Department of Housing and Urban Development between 1998 in 2015. Now, the study was verified by no less authority than Catherine Austin Fitz, who, whose mainstream credentials include a stint uh, during the George H.W. Bush administration. Now, the most shocking instance of such bookkeeping uh, leisure domain was uh, amounted to a colossal $2.3 trillion that was admitted by then Secretary of State Donald Rumsfeld of course, you remember that September 10th, 2001. And Rumsfeld was very specific in identifying America's adversary, saying that it was closer to home. It was indeed the Pentagon bureaucracy. And then, of course, the September 11th terror attack happened the next day. And isn't it a coinky dink that the black hole that was pierced into the side of the Pentagon? just so happened to be in the exact spot that the investigation into the $2.3 trillion was taking place. Hmm. Tell you, these coinky dinks, they're, uh, they catch up with us here in America. Now, it, it, very interestingly enough, um, the loss of money, the unaccountability, if you will, has gone on basically carte blanche since that day and so the question is who controls the hidden stash of missing funds and or who controlled the reckless spending of funds has the gao the government accountability office sought closure over this issue is this um civil war within the u.s deep state in reality a tussie over the slush fund and whatever this high whatever the hypothesis, make no mistake, he says, an undocumentable twenty-one trillion dollars in limbo somewhere can fund uh, revolutions, regime change, and wars anywhere, and uh, endless wars. Twenty-one trillion dollars is a cosmic, unheard of, unimaginable amount of money. I mean, it it can fund anything, anywhere, at any time, and it can't only fix spot prices for global markets, but spot narratives as well. Think about that. It can ensure any day of rage planned over U.S. President Donald Trump's recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel would remain a damp squib until the time emerges to redraw the contours of the Middle East. And once tempers are skillfully stoked towards Middle East endgame, global markets can be shortened to localize geopolitical attention. You know, the day of rage may then be directed at local leaders who will be in desperate need of a solution to keep their regimes and societies intact. And for an added perspective, it says, consider this. Eva, ever wonder how, how George Soros, with an official net worth of only $8 billion, can threaten governments in a way uh, Lee Kang Shing, with a, network of, a net worth of $33.7 billion, can because in all likelihood, funds channeled into Soros's transnational human rights hydras were never quite his in the first place. An activist billionaire is the perfect shill for deep state and transnational interests. And here he's absolutely right. You see, that money goes towards the real government that runs the world. And of course, that's the shadow government, the deep state, if that's what you want to call it runs by another name that I like to call it, the powers that shouldn't be, or even more affectionately, the control freaks. And they are the ones 
that pull the strings, that make our non-representing representatives dance. Them and their corporate crony counterparts in the private sector. So this, my friends, is a huge glaring issue. Huge issue. And it's not going to go away until we get some level or some measure of accountability. The problem is you'll never see it. You'll never see it if you expect the Congress to police itself, to expect the bureaucracy of the executive branch to police itself. It will never do that. No more than we would police ourselves if we were up to no good. Oh, yeah, let me just tell on myself and punish myself. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just get right on that. No, that's not going to happen. That's why it's always they go, 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 and then they get caught, and then the crocodile tears come. Knowing full well that they, what they did was wrong, and, and they have no remorse. They're just, they, they are sorry that they got caught. They're not sorry for the actual crime itself. Well, if they were given license to do it again, why they do it again? So, $21 trillion, that would solve a whole lot of problems here in the United States. But again, and just like I've said in prior news shots, I believe the apathy of the American people is so great that we will never see any sort of justice or accountability come from this broken system that we have in place. And the only way that we will see change in significance is going to be a complete teardown and reversal of all of years and years and years of just totally and completely destroying the system. We just have to start at ground zero. And that ground zero, my friends, is quite simple. It's a well over 200-year-old document called the Constitution. And if we just stick to that and that alone and start there, I think we might be able to do something. But if we can't, then why even continue this charade? Let's just, let's just end it all. Hell, come on, Mao, let's go. Let's, let's stop this whole freedom and democracy, red, white, and blue, ooh, it's good to be free, United States of America, cognitive dissonance, because it's totally not true. Anybody with half a brain in their heads can go ahead and take a look at what we have today and know beyond the shadow of a doubt that that has nothing to do with freedom. No, we can even go as far as to say Americans, people in the world in general, have no idea what it means to truly be free. As a matter of fact, I truly believe that peasants in China know more what it means to be free than those here in the United States. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's news shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website, at thedailysheeple.com. Hashtag wake the flock up. Have a great day, everybody.